water would sparkle, good fish, good water for good fish, hearing the birds, attracting the birds and other wildlife, and then the human component of it as a homeowner, what you can get from uh, planting natives, the benefits. So it's the ecosystem and the human system. Heal the earth one yard at a time. You can make a difference. If I, you know, it, this is wonderful. It's the gold standard, the conservancy of having contiguous natural areas. So the wildlife can move around. But, you know what they found out? Stepping stones works too, or little corridors. You know, a little patch of wildlife, a little patch, a little patch. And that's where the homeowners come in into play. Okay. They can provide those patches of native plants that the ecosystem needs. This is a map from the USDA plant database. Uh, it is very helpful to see if it's something's native. What's even more helpful, if you click on the state over and over again, you get the county location. The NAR now requires on new seawalls that you put glacial stone with native plants. Why? Because it's worth we're mimicking nature. Storm water pollutes our waterways, our lakes, our rivers, our streams. Native plants with those massive roots helps that polluted water infiltrate instead of running. Um, now what Rainbow Gardens are not is they're not always wet. Okay? <laughs> uh, they're not going to hold and uh, have a lot of mosquitoes or anything like that, okay? They're not always going to have water in them. They're meant to retain the slowly increase infiltration for 24 to 48 hours, depending on the soils and how you design it, okay? Again, the goal is to find an area where water runs off from uh, parking lots, downspouts from the roofs, hardened footpaths, basketball courts, tennis courts, all those different things like the size your rain garden needs to be, okay? And this uh, depends on a lot of different factors. Uh, first of all, you need to determine the drainage area. But as a as a watershed, okay. So, what is the area that will drain into your rain garden? So, how much land will contribute water to your rain garden? Second thing is your soil type. Okay. So, if you have really sandy soils, you know, obviously the water is going to infiltrate faster. If you have clay soils, it's going to be really slow. And then the depth of your rain garden, so how thick your soil and those types of things, uh, will be determined on how steep your slope is. Basically three different parts of rain garden. There's your vegetative layer, okay, so your plants. Okay? And uh, obviously it's highly beneficial to use native plants because all the different benefits we talked about. Um, and then you have uh, your mulch layer and then you have your soil.